Hello, fine people. I'm back with you again today for the third video in this series on doing web design on a Chromebook using, in our case, the Carat Editor and things that we have access to on our Chromebooks to actually put together a web page. Today's video is going to be all about getting images in the places that I said we needed images uh, in video number two, or possibly video number one. I don't know. But anyway, I wanted a big picture of some cupcakes right here, and then a smaller picture of cupcakes here, a small picture of a cake here, and a small picture of some cookies here. Now, I've already found images for the hero, the small cupcakes, and the small cake. We do need an image of um, some cookies to go right here. And I'm going to show you the process I use whenever I'm putting together something educational to go find images that I'm allowed to use for non-commercial purposes. So I'm going to go to Google Images, and, and you can do this too for your school projects and such. Now, if you're doing this for a client that is going to make a profit off of these images, this is not okay to do. All right? So uh, I'm going to type in Frosted cookies and here's the trick to make sure we're allowed to use these you go over here to tools underneath the search bar or search box for uh, frosted cookies and usage rights and I'm gonna do labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification that allows us to shrink them if we want to shrink them change uh, anything about them and post them on online uh, for whatever purpose we want as long as it's non-commercial and school projects fall into non-commercial use and I found uh, this on Flickr I'm gonna go with that okay so let's just click on that and the way that you do it on Google Images is you click on the name of the site okay and this pops up this guy's name is Steven DePolo, and here is his uh, usage rights that he has tagged this picture with. Okay, so some rights reserved, and I know from experience when you see this icon, that is the Creative Commons license with the by clause, meaning that you have to give attribution as to who took it. So some rights reserved, you can click. And Creative Commons is a set of licenses that anybody is free to use that explains what the rights of the licensor is and what are the rights of the licensee. And in this case, we would be the licensee. The licensor would be Stephen DiPolo. So Creative Commons, and there's the little symbol for attribution. It gives us a kind of a rundown of what this allows us to do. In this case, we're allowed to share it and uh, make changes to it, which is great. Uh, the only thing is we have to give this guy uh, attribution, and it is not saying that he endorses the way that we use it. So he's taken that into consideration, and he's fine with somebody using his work as long as he gets some credit for it. So I'm going to hit this little download this photo. And we don't need it to be too big. 800 by 600 will do just fine. Okay, and it's going to download it to our downloads folder. But before I leave this, what I want to do is um, get this web address here for Stephen DiPolo's Flickr. Right click and copy it. And I have made a document called Sources, and I just put it in my bootstrap business folder and I've just basically kept a list of where I got the images that we're going to use to do today's work okay so uh, pink frosted cookies and then I'll do CC by Steven DePolo and then I'm going to paste in the web address where I found it and I am going to include all of this attribution information in 
the uh, description of this video and I am also going to uh, put links at the bottom of our created page with uh, you know the information of where we got each of these images this one here came from the wikimedia.org which is a um, sister company to Wikipedia and they have tons and tons of images that people have posted that you're allowed to use but you have to give attribution most of the time okay so I'll just save my little sources and I'll close this because I don't really need it anymore now let's go uh, you can see here's these other images that I already got and uh, I'm going to rename this one to four cupcakes. I think there's four in this. Let me double click it and look. Uh, I'm just going to call it bunch of cupcakes. Okay, and the other one that we got of the cookies from Mr. Stephen DiPolo is right here. I'll just move this into images and then I will rename it to oh I forgot we're on a Chromebook now we have all of our images that we're going to use we may resize these but somehow I think we can get by with it without doing that I do not know if you guys can install paint Z we'll burn that bridge when we get there if we have to all right so, how do we go about getting these in place the way that I wanted? Well, let's go back to our code here. I'm going to start with our hero. Remember, that's the the big area that has, uh, you know, edited with carrying in it right now. And in Bootstrap uh, language, they call it a Jumbotron. I'm just going to add myself a class here. called cupcake pg okay, and we have to save control s so I'm gonna go in here and go down on the last line and do dot cupcake bg and then I'll put in a set of curlies and remember the property is background hyphen image colon and then this one is a little different than most because we're using a URL uh, value and you have to put in the path to the image that we want to use for the background now this gets a little tricky and people mess up on this all the time this heroic features dot CSS is in a CSS folder okay and we have to do the path relative to this CSS folder and this file so in order to get to our images folder we have to go out of the CSS folder back into what's called the root and then into images and then uh, the name of the um, file that we're wanting to put in here okay so what I'm gonna do is do dot dot and what that does is that says go up one level so we're out of the CSS folder now with this path and we're in the root and we can access anything in this root just by going at it like normal so I'll do images forward slash and then if you'll notice you're not seeing all these images in here in the editor and that is because I have to go refresh the project now most IDEs or integrated development environments that I've ever used automatically refresh when new files are added but this one does not so you just got to go to project refresh directories and there they are okay and we know it's called bunch hyphen of hyphen cupcakes dot jpg bunch hyphen of hyphen cupcakes dot jpg now I will save and I have saved index.html remember I can tell because uh, there's not a circle there it's an X it means you've saved now let's refresh and see what it looks like and that's not necessarily what we would want ok 
Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to um, edit these in uh, Paint X at some point, but for now I'm going to leave it like that and we will lighten up this text. Okay, we're just going to roll with it because, hey man, that's what we do. And a lot of times in web design, that's what you do. You kind of get something in place and then you come back and fix it exactly how you want it uh, at a later point. Okay, now we also want to change the text color here. So remember that's just color and white. We'll just do that for now. You can get by with three F's or six F's if you remember how that works. Okay, so now that's that's okay. That'll do. That's you know, we're going to roll with it because uh, we can come back with Paint X, especially once I've played with Paint X a little bit and gotten used to how it works because I'm not really that familiar with it, to be honest. So let's go edit this text just to make it look a little better for now. And we have to jump over to here. Instead of edited with cat, I'm going to put in Susie's Sweets. And remember, all these classes are things built into Bootstrap. I will probably do a little Google uh, Slides presentation to refresh your memory on what a lot of this built-in stuff is. Because I know it's been a while. Everything's been kind of weird. So we're doing the, the best we can with everything. There we go. Just some some text to put in there. And uh, we don't really need this button. We're not doing a call to action. Okay. So I'll go ahead and save. And we'll refresh. I like to save and refresh. There we go. And we'll come in and put some Google fonts in here and all that in a much later video. Now, let us set it up so that there's only three cards here instead of four. Three cards instead of four. And it's not that hard to do. You just, we have to make a few changes here and there. Um, so remember, we've got row as a class, div class row, and that's how, uh, that's the foundation of a grid in, um, bootstrap. And on the medium here, um, hmm, 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 hmm. Why are we seeing four of these? Okay, so this has to add up to 12 if we want 3. So I'm going to do MD4, okay, because we're going to have three cards. We're going to change the MD part to um, 4, okay, and we're going to change this one to 4. And this last one that we're going to need is also going to be changed to 4. Okay, and we do not need this fourth um, card. So, let's see. I am going to collapse the code in the editor. That's one advantage of it. We hit that little triangle right there. Going to highlight that and delete it. And the people that made this template, the Start Bootstrap people, use this convention where if you have a big bunch of stuff nested in a div and you want to remember what the closing div is for you can put in a comment like this with the class of the div that that's closing and it says row and remember if you come up here and look we did start a row class that contains everything 
So if we go look at this, we should have three boxes because four times three is 12 and it's a 12, um, a 12 column grid system in a bootstrap. So let's go save and refresh and these should magically get bigger. And they did not. Hmm. What happened? What happened? I'm going to take my window here and just shrink it up. And you can see if it gets really small, they all kind of collapse and become their own thing. And that's good. That's what we want. But I don't know what I did wrong here. Hmm. Oh, I bet it's considered a large screen. So we need to change the large to four as well. That's real smart there of me to forget to do that. I would like to tell you that I make these mistakes on purpose. And occasionally I do, but more often than not, it's simply a brain fart. And you guys get to see a lot more of that than I would like. Yeah, that's what it was. There we go. We have a spot for all three things. Now we'll throw these images in here and that will be the end of it for this particular video. So uh, let's go back to our code and we have it refreshed so that we can see them all. And each one of these cards has placeholder images in it. And there's a really cool website called placeholder.it. And then you do a slash and whatever size you want the placeholder image, you put in the uh, width and the height and it returns a PNG image with nothing more than the uh, dimensions. And um, it's just a really good way to get a, a placeholder in without having to do a lot of work. So the first one I want to do is my cupcakes. So this one's called images cupcakes with frosting. And I really can't top right now. Not really sure what's up with me. All right. And the next one, we're wanting the chocolate cake. So we come down to our next card where the image is. And finally, we're going to put in the frosted cookies. Oops. Never forget your paths, right? Because index is in the root. We have to go in a folder and then inside of that folder. Okay, and I'll go ahead and save this. Control S. And let's see what they look like without us doing any resizing or uh, what have you. And I tell you, that doesn't look horrible. The chocolate cake is a little bit cut off compared to these other ones. See, because it scaled it and it's smaller. The aspect ratio makes it smaller or less high. So these two are uh, the same as best as my poor eyes can tell. So without having to do any modifications and just throwing our images in there, that doesn't look too bad in my opinion. So in tomorrow's video, we're going to work on the colors for the buttons and put the attribution in the footer, like I said we were going to do, because we want to give the people that provided us with these images all the credit. Um, because if you're going to use other people's work under a license, you need to do what the license says. So I hope everybody's uh, safe and 
uh, nice and warm or cool, whichever way it needs to be and has plenty to eat. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.